Now take what I say with a little bit of salt because I'm not a quant. I am just a tech enthusiast and I hope to shed some light on what the quant industry entails. And by the end of this video, you will know what type of skills are required to start in the quantitative role and what you should be expecting once you are inside of that role and ultimately decide whether or not this path is the right path for you. So let's start off. What exactly is a quant, you might ask? You, you design an algorithm, you test it out on a computer, does it work, doesn't it work, and so on. Quants are mostly in the short term business because models can't really predict a year, two years, three years, five years, 10 years out because with our current technology, it's just not feasible. And this is where fundamental analysis can come into play. Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger are known to be value investors and they depend on fundamental analysis and they have a very long time horizon and they have a very great track record in terms of their rate of return. Now, one thing you should take away from the quant industry is that quant industry does not necessarily scale capital very well. For instance, Renaissance Technology, one of the most famous quant firms out there that has astronomical rate of return around 60%, they only manage about $10 billion worth of capital. And the reason for this cap is that once they manage more than that amount, they start to move the market instead of capitalize on that market. So that is one aspect that the fundamental analysis folks or the value investors have over the quantitative folks is that they can manage a lot more capital if need be. Anyway, let's get back to quants and note that within the quant umbrella, there are multiple roles that fit underneath that umbrella. And so let's go ahead and break them down. Quant researcher. You can think of them as data scientists who come up with a variety of modeling ideas and backtest their models in hopes of generating profits for the firm. They convert raw data to trade signals, and most of the development surrounds the thinking of the quant researcher. To be a quant researcher, you most definitely need to have coding skills. The language of choice for prototyping is typically Python because it takes less time to create a mockup for the model. When it comes to production and deployment, the language shifts to a lower level language such as Java or C++ due to speed. Having a strong background in mathematics and statistics is a must. If you completely understand stochastic calculus, then your math side is adequate. If you have a strong background in combinatorics, probability distributions, hypothesis testing, then you have a good enough statistics background. And lastly, if you know advanced supervised learning and unsupervised learning techniques, such as many, if not all of the techniques I cover on this YouTube channel, you should be relatively fine with the machine learning side. The level of degree of education quite varies between, you know, from the firm and role to role. However, there is a heavy emphasis on PhD and a little bit on masters and some exceptional bachelor students. And the total compensation for many of these roles can amount to at least $200,000 and this is the quant researcher role is more dependent on the bonuses and so if your model is really really performant then you can expect bonuses in the amounts of millions of dollars if it's very successful quant developers now you can think of these folks as essentially software engineers but in the finance they primarily focus on speed deployments data cleansing and tools that the researchers and traders will use in their line of work in addition, they integrate the work of quant researcher and write production level code to deploy the quant researcher's model. The application of this specific role is very similar to that of a software engineer. So make sure you brush up on your data structures and algorithms and efficiencies that are associated with those algorithms. There will be some light mathematics and statistics that are involved with the application process. And also the coding language of choice, I should say, is between Java and C++ with an emphasis on C++. In terms of compensation, quant developers actually get paid a little bit more than FANG software engineers by maybe 10 to 20 percent more the next common role is quant trader these folks also have a very strong quantitative background but not as rigorous as that of a quant researcher they focus on the monitoring and execution phase of the actual model themselves and they'll go ahead and look for any current events that may affect the model and they monitor that specific situation to make sure that the model is within a specified confined boundary. The compensation is very similar to quant researchers, but the bonuses are a little bit smaller. And also the level of education is roughly around bachelor's and master's degrees. Now, at the end of the day, the smaller the firm is, the more intertwined these roles become. Now, with all the roles explained and laid out, let's go ahead and take a look at how all these roles integrate 
into the production pipeline. The first piece of the pipeline is a data pipeline. Quant developers in this piece are responsible for collecting, storing, indexing, and adjusting data from tabulated, hierarchical, and free-form sources of information. They also need to be familiar with FIX, Financial Information Exchange. This is instrumental for the entire pipeline because essentially this is where your data is coming from. And the next piece is feature extraction. Do note that this is not equivalent to actually creating a model, but more so trying to find value from the clean data from the very first portion of the pipeline. This can include visualizations, weighting of features, feature transforms, buy or sell signal identification, probabilities of some event occurring, etc. In the end, you will have a catalog of features ready to be used as inputs for whichever model you might be deemed appropriate. You can think of this step as like an additional cleansing stage, but this will be disseminated throughout all of your teams within your organization to use. And once you have all of your available features ready to be used as input, now it's time for the model development phase. Or in other words, the investment strategy. Using the features from the feature extraction step, you will develop a general theory that describes a large amount of the features obtained. Note that just combining a bunch of features does not constitute a theory. You need to identify economic mechanisms that causes one to lose or gain capital. This can include regulatory constraints, behavioral economics, and deferring data sources, and so much more. And once a prototype model has been constructed, now it's time to backtest your model. Backtesting primarily tests the successfulness of your given model via different situations, financial situations that happened in the past. Lots of experiments will be done and determining the probability of overfit is a must. A really good backtesting approach uses the heuristics found in the model development stage and stress tests the related scenarios. This is why having some intuition behind the general theory is appropriate. You don't have a king. You'd have re-raised pre-flop. And you're never moving in on a queen here in case I have the king. This testing will ultimately determine whether or not the model is ready to be placed in production. Lots of experiments will be done in determining the probability of overfit is a must. And the next phase is the deployment phase. This is essentially where you're trying to convert your prototype model into a lower latency language as C++ or Java, and you essentially just pass this over to the quant developers and they handle the production related code and focus on optimizations and efficiencies of your code in order to make Make sure that everything is as fast as possible and everything is up to standards. They will most definitely use parallelization, GPUs, schedulers, automated deployments, and distributed compute. So essentially, speed is essential. And the very last piece of the production pipeline is a portfolio management aspect. The model has been deployed and is connected to real live data, but essentially you're still testing out your model. Now that your model has been connected to a live stream of data that is flowing right in, you're not necessarily actually trading with real money. You're essentially going to be doing paper trading to determine whether or not your model is as accurate as it has been in the back testing process. So paper trading is essentially the idea that you are going to be acting on your buy and sell input signals and you'll be acting upon that with artificial money. So you won't actually be trading on those signals, but what if you have traded on those signals? What would your profit and loss statement look like after the fact? This also provides you the opportunity to double check whether or not you have any inconsistencies or latency issues with your existing code base. And you can go ahead and fix those bugs right away without any damage done. And then the final step where you are comfortable with actually using real life money, you would then trade with real life money. But it is actually up to the portfolio manager to determine how much capital is going to be allocated to your specific strategy. So when it's just starting off, a small amount of capital will be allocated, but the longer the model is running and the long or the more successful the model is, then the more capital will be allocated to that specific strategy. And then all good things come to an end, partly because the competition will more or less copy your strategy or have a very close replication of your strategy and your strategy just will not work anymore. So you will then have to decommission your strategy and your model and then the cycle 
continues. So that's essentially what a quant does in a given quant industry. And also that is the type of pipeline, production pipeline that a quant will follow inside of a given organization. Now, if you want to see any additional topics related to the financial industry, please let me know down in the comments section down below. And while you're at it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button for future content. And if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.